talk about minerals in New Zealand, and in most dairy industries around the world, it's always talked about minerals and vitamins. The general understanding is that we have enough vitamin to come from this green grass in New Zealand to get us through. And by rights, it is. We, we have fantastic levels of vitamin A, it's pre precursor beta carotene, and sometimes vitamin E coming through our grass. But in a New Zealand dairy system, what proportion of time of your cows grazing fresh green grass? And when I mean grazing it, I don't mean just hanging out in the paddock. I mean more than six to seven kilograms per day. The reality is, on dry land farms, it's a lot less than what we think. Are you aware when this fantastic paddock of annual grass gets rolled up and stuck in a bale or in a silage pit, that all the vitamins and beta carotene are destroyed? Same with the polyunsaturated fats, same with the omega-3s. All of these things are destroyed by the acid environment in silage. Uh, vitamin D is another key vitamin. It has nothing really to do with the grass. And you know, you guys do live in the land of the long white cloud. So our vitamin D levels in New Zealand are not nearly as high as we would hope. The next vitamin that I really want to discuss is biotin. Biotin has been proven in high rainfall, low milk production zones to Im improve, uh, improve hoof health, reduce white line disease, um, and it's a great aid in, in helping the cow deal with lameness issues. In high production situations, biotin is fantastic for increasing milk production and has been shown through many studies in the US that it can do that. So vitamins do play a significant role in New Zealand. Solus is backed by the premier vitamin producer in the world, DSM, and uh, if you want to talk about vitamins and what, they might, what difference they're making for your farm, and also the amount of time that your cows don't receive green grass in their diet, talk to the guys at Solus, they can help you out in this area.